Trish is a little powerhouse. There is no stopping her, so she's had to find ways of dealing with the constraints post-polio is having on her very active life. I've made provisions in my life to change the way I do things. So I sit down now to cook. I sit down to fold the washing. I don't vacuum. Um, I have a husband to do that, fortunately. Uh, I keep telling people I have a disability that doesn't allow me to do housework, so, which is very convenient. <laughs> so I, I've, I've arranged my life so that it's better for me. We've just put on an extension. I've built a ramp so that later on, I'll be able to manage. Everything we've done is thinking forward because we know that I'm not going to come back from this. This is, this is as I am, is as good as it gets. And that's fine with me, as long as I can keep doing what I want to do. So let's just see how that feels to okay. do the initial. I'll get it into position for you first of all. So if we're trying to strengthen up your arms, enough for them to be um, a little bit stronger for using your... Trisha's job was to speak with Cathy White, a physiotherapist at Polio Services Victoria, who specialises in the treatment of polio survivors. If you have a physio who's aware of post-polio syndrome, they can take your needs into account. One of the things that happens when, you, when we had polio was that the nerve endings died and we sprouted new little ones that took the load. As we're getting post-polio, with the stress and strain that we've put on our muscles, they're dying. So we're losing muscle tone. So it's not like other muscles where if you keep exercising, they will regenerate. Ours will not. I think the role of physiotherapy with people who've had polio has changed over the years. Um, traditionally in the past, physios, I guess, were a lot more hands-on with people who'd had physio and there was a lot of massage and perhaps passive exercises, so the physio moving um, the patient's leg or arm. These days I really think that the most useful role of physiotherapists is to um, be involved in setting up exercise programs for people who have had polio because that's quite a complicated area and you need someone who has a good understanding of polio, obviously, to start off with exercise physiology, so how the body responds to exercise normally, um, but also a good understanding of, of joints and the potential problems with joints because obviously, um, because polio can affect all the muscles around a particular joint, um, you do have to be quite careful what you then do with that joint long term in terms of exercising it, um, not straining it through activity. So um, that's probably quite a big part of the physio. There is still some hands-on physio. So, um, for example, with Trisha, in the past she's come in and had um, really what amounts to tennis elbow, um, just tendonitis in um, the area around the elbow. Um, but that's because of the way she's used her, her crutches. Okay, you need to have a knowledge of what the effects of post-polio syndrome or the late effects of polio are, so that if you put extra stresses on the muscles, it could damage them or weaken them further. So you need a balance between exercise and the need to conserve the muscles, muscle tone. It's not like other muscles or ordinary muscles which may regenerate, ours don't necessarily do that, they won't build up. It may actually damage them further by exercising, but it depends on the type of exercise. So if you have low impact exercise, that's good. But if you do stressful exercise, then that's bad. So there's things like um, the hydrotherapy and things like that. I do stretching exercises, which, which help me. Exercise is, is a bit of a confusing area <laughs> um, in terms of people who have had polio, but in the same way that it's important for everyone in the general population to, to exercise and be cardiovascularly fit um, in order to control other health risk factors like diabetes and um, heart disease, um, high blood pressure, it's, it's equally important for people who've had polio. Just because you've had polio doesn't unfortunately give you immunity for all those other diseases. So I do think cardiovascular exercise in some shape or form is really important for people who've had polio. Obviously it can become a lot harder to exercise if um, some of the the routine types of exercise aren't, aren't that easy for you to participate in. For example, you know, if you're wearing a long leg brace, 
um, or you need to use crutches or a stick when you're walking. Walking even further distances is, is not necessarily a great thing to be recommended for your joints. Mm. Um, so often it's a matter of balancing the, the benefits of exercise, so the cardiovascular benefits, against the potential detrimental effects or, or side effects of you know, pounding the pavement on, on ankle or knee joints that have been affected by polio. Pace yourself. That's the big thing. Don't not do things because you have to live your life, but pace yourself. You don't have to do everything and you don't have to do more than anybody else. We would often talk to people, and look, it's really easy to say this sort of thing, and I think it's much harder to actually put it into practice, about trying to pace every activity that people are doing during their day. So. Um, if they're vacuuming the home, do one room at a time and take a break. Um, if they're going to work and they're working a night shift, make sure that they're sitting down, you know, for five minutes once an hour. Um, if they're participating in an exercise class, make sure that they let the instructor know that they're not going to do the whole hour straight, that halfway through they'll take a little break. And the idea behind that is, is that you're allowing the muscles that become fatigued more easily with a history of polio to have a bit of rejuvenation time I guess just to recharge the batteries.